Now let me give you a few practical steps to work your don't give upness. Okay, let me just give you a few practical steps. Number one, you got to know the objective, decide your purpose. Know the objective, decide your purpose. You must know the objective and decide your purpose in the matter at hand with God's help. You need God's help in this. Can you imagine playing football but not knowing the goal? Oh, you just run. Which way? Well, who cares? Run for what? With what? And why? Oh, just have fun and run. Go ahead. You see, that, my friend, is why so many good people, they just give up on life. They don't truly know the objective. So their purpose is unintentional. Is the objective indulgence, sacrifice, fame, wealth, altruism, or any kind of just feel good win? What's the real objective to life? Which bricklayer are you? Only you can decide for yourself if you'll acknowledge your makers, the makers plan and true purpose for your life, your design. You see, you decide that. Don't give up practical step number one, know the objective and decide your purpose with God's help. Number two, encourage yourself in the Lord. Yes, God will fight for you, but you've got to do your part. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Quit going over and over the loss, the offense, the trauma. There's no good or profit in that. You can sing gloom and despair and agony on me, but it won't fix the problem or encourage you. Sure, you've got enemies. You may even have some good people right now that are thinking about stoning you. Like David, remember the psalmist did. But encourage yourself in the Lord. Maybe your friend isn't calling you back or responding to your apology. Encourage yourself in the Lord. How? Start saying what the Lord says about you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How about this one? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And oh, I like this one. God has thoughts and plans for me for peace and blessing, not destruction, but to give me a future and a hope. The famous Jeremiah 29, 11, right? Or how about something so fundamental to being a child of God? God so loves me that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, so that I would have eternal life. Praise God. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You can do this. And number three, you have got to work the vision. Oh, emptiness talks and it sounds like sadness. Fullness talks and it sounds like gladness. Empty wants to give up. Full wants to go up. It's not enough to be healed. That's great, but what are you healed for? For life, for love, for giving and helping and encouraging others. That's working the vision. You work the vision. You work the vision for the future to go up or the law of sin and death will keep pulling you down, down, and down. I'm gonna keep on saying this. Your repetition determines your persuasion. If you keep repeating that it's hopeless, then you will have a decided belief that it is hopeless. God cannot contradict your choice for death and cursing. He's given you the power of choice so that you have the lawful right to reject truth if that's what you wanna do. How can you reject his hope, his great plans for your life, his promises for you, his provision, and not feel like giving up? You might say, well, I don't wanna do that. But if you're constantly repeating bad information, ungodly thinking, ungodly teaching, and lies from the devil, then you've decided your repetition. Again, your repetition determines your persuasion. 